Good morning guys! Welcome back to our channel. As you can tell, I am in a different location today. If you watched my last video, then you already know that a few weeks ago I moved house. Um, so I moved out of my one bedroom apartment into this place. It feels like it's been a while since I've done like a sit down video. So I just feel like generally really awkward in front of the camera, just grabbing my water. But yeah, this is the new place. I've got my plant babies behind me. I'm kind of sitting in the front room, which has really good light. And this is where I'm keeping all of my plants at the moment. So I think me and Becca are gonna have to do a plant, plant tour, plant show and tell at some stage because we've kind of both got pretty decent collections forming. I should also mention that I did vlog the entire moving process and I have started a new channel for vlogging. So I will put the link to that channel in the little box below. But I'm actually gonna be doing some vlogs on a separate channel. Won't change any of the content that I upload here on To Cultivate Beauty. But really it's just gonna be a separate channel um, for myself and my partner Nick where we can do some kind of silly, fun vlogs and kind of more rough cut vlogs. I'll still be doing some vlogs on this channel. Won't really change anything on here, but if you want to see more, you can go and subscribe to that other channel. But yeah, this is a new place, so I think I'll do some sort of house tour at some stage if you guys would like to see that. It's not like completely decorated, but at the same time, I don't know like how much elaborate decorating I'm gonna do because we're just renting here. I don't really want to like, you know, end up spending a bunch of money just to like get it looking a certain way if we end up moving in the future. <laughs> so I've been kind of hesitant whether I just do a house tour with it as it is or I can wait and see because I, I probably will like make some tweaks. Like I need a rug for that room because it's really cold in here. I thought that this house was going to be really warm, but it's actually really cold. It comes up through the floors, which is a little bit of a pain, but it does have really nice lighting. So that's a bonus and a bonus for you guys in videos because I won't look like I'm sitting in a dark cave. But yeah, anyways, I should probably get into the topic of today's video. How to stop mindless snacking because if anyone knows me in real life, I am quite a snacker and it's something that I have been working on recently. Recently, I actually stopped all snacks altogether and I've noticed a real difference in a few things. So number one, I am a lot less bloated um, and we'll talk about that in a second as to why that might be. Number two, I just find myself like thinking less about food. For me personally, I'll kind of just get into like what I've been doing. So for me personally, I was really addicted to chocolate. Something that was kind of like annoying me. It was a little bit of a food addiction. And I'm not even saying that chocolate is unhealthy. I personally eat 90% dark chocolate and cacao is actually really good for you. But it was just becoming something that was kind of outside of my control. For example, I would be eating chocolate in between a meal, like after breakfast or something like that. And after I did it, I'd be like, why did I do that? And I don't like that when a food has control over you. So I kind of got to the stage where I was eating like a bar of chocolate a day and I was like, this has to stop. Aside from it just being addictive, it's also like expensive. So that's another thing to take into consideration. But yeah, so for the past week, I have cut out actually be over a week now. I've cut out all snacking and I'm feeling so much better. I'm feeling like I'm actually a sane person again. And that's not to say that like I'm never going to snack or I'm never going to eat chocolate because that would be a little bit crazy. But for now, I've like cut that out 100% and I'll reintroduce it at some point in time, hopefully in more moderation so I can actually yeah, moderate that food rather than um, just binging on chocolate all the time. And I thought I would also mention some reasons why it might be good to check in with your snacking habits. So as usual, I'll put out my little health disclaimer now. This is not health advice. Um, always consult with a practitioner. These are things that have worked for me in my experience. But in terms of reasons why snacking might not always be 
Um, such a good idea. So the number one, constant snacking can be bad for our digestion. So ideally when we eat, we want to actually feel hungry. And a lot of the time when people are snacking, they're snacking when they're not hungry, they're snacking when they're stressed, they're snacking just for the sake of snacking, not necessarily because they're hungry. If you're snacking and you're legitimately hungry, that's kind of a different story. But for a lot of us, yeah, it's not exactly that. It's usually we're snacking when we're not hungry. So what that means, when we snack when we're not hungry, our digestion essentially isn't going to be primed for receiving food. So we're not going to have the ideal digestive secretions, enzymes, stomach acid, and all of that to help break down that food and digest it properly. Another interesting point, in our digestive system, we have this thing called our migrating motor complex. And what that essentially does is that it helps to stimulate motility in our intestines to help move food along. And that migrating motor complex actually functions during periods of fasting. So in between meals, so if you have breakfast, lunch, that four to five period in between is when our migrating motor complex is most active. And when we snack in between that meal, we are actually interrupting that migrating motor complex and it's not going to be as effective in moving food along. And for that reason, fasting and avoiding over snacking is really important for people that have SIBO or small intestinal bacterial overgrowth because we really want to be helping our migrating motor complex as much as possible so that things aren't sticking around in the small intestine and causing fermentation and bacterial overgrowth. And essentially what this means is that if you're snacking frequently in between meals when you're not hungry, you're likely not going to have optimal digestion. You could even have a little bit of bloating and things like that. But anyways, now I'm going to get into five tips that have kind of been helping me throughout the past week because yeah it's really been a week since I cut out all of my snacking and my chocolate habit and I've just been sticking to three main meals throughout the day so my very first tip is to challenge yourself and commit to just a week of no snacking and it's not about being like overly harsh on yourself it's not that you can never ever have a snack ever again in the future but it is just a little interesting experiment to do and i think that it does take some level of um what's the word motivation that might motivation um in the beginning at least so for the first few days it's definitely like breaking an addiction especially if you're like me and you have a chocolate problem and that's what you're snacking on so for the first few days you do actually have to mentally try and over time that becomes so much easier like it's been a week now and i'm fine like i'm not really thinking about it i've kind of like broken i guess a little bit of the addiction that i had so it's just a lot easier for the first maybe three to four days it was something that i mentally kind of struggled with and i did have to like exercise um what is isn't motivation but it's similar to motivation i can't think of what it is um but you know what i mean i had to actually try it wasn't necessarily just an autopilot habit that i had going on so that's kind of my first tip just give yourself a week really commit to it and treat it as like a little bit of a fun challenge okay so my second tip is to increase the size of your main meals Ideally, you should be able to go about four hours in between meals without feeling overly hungry. So if that's something that you're struggling with, or I think it really is a case of actually assessing how much are you eating for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Because if you're just having a little salad with some leaves for lunch, and then you don't know why you can't make it to dinner, well, that's probably why. We have to increase the amount of energy and calories that are in that meal. So doing things like adding avocado, um, some good quality carbohydrates, some protein, obviously. You wanna make sure that you are having balanced meals. And the same goes with breakfast, making sure that you're having enough protein there. Sometimes people are just having like one egg. You wanna make sure that you're having like two eggs, maybe even three, getting on top of the amount of protein that you're eating, just so that you're going to have that even energy level throughout the morning and you're not going to feel like you want to dip into your snack stash. So that is something that I have been really mindful of over the past week because I did realize that my breakfast we're getting a little bit sparse and low energy so I've been kind of beefing that up a little bit to make sure that throughout the morning I'm not getting hungry and snacking third tip 
is if you do enjoy something um, maybe like slightly sweet, you can kind of just move your snacks around so that they're combined in with your main meals because the main thing is just that you want to be able to go for that time in between without eating again. So for example, at the moment, after my lunch, I usually have a piece of fruit just to kind of have something that's a little bit sweet and a little bit yummy. You could do like a kiwi fruit or something like that. It's that's ideal as well because kiwi fruit is low sugar. But yeah, that is my third tip. If you do want to have something like slightly sweet, just combine it in with your main meal that day. Okay, so tip number four is to have some different herbal teas on hand or even coffee if it's the first half of the day. I don't tend to recommend that people drink coffee in the second half of the day, but first half of the day, I don't think it's such a big deal provided you're not a massive stress head. Teas and things with no calories don't tend to be as disruptive for our digestive system and don't tend to bring our migrating motor complex to a halt. So having, yeah, just a few different herbal teas on hand, it also just gives you something to sip on and to keep you somewhat busy. So now we are on to tip number five. This is my final tip is to find some alternative ways to deal with stress. So for a lot of us, mindless snacking and mindless eating is a way that we cope with difficult emotions, with stress that's in our lives. Obviously that is not an ideal way to be dealing with stress, kind of emotionally eating. So what you do want to start doing is looking at different ways that you can manage your stress that is, I guess, more healthy. Incorporating things like meditation, it's a good time to experiment with that if you haven't already. You can download like the Headspace app, which has 10 free uh, guided meditations which is really good and it's kind of interesting because when you're not snacking or even when you're doing something like intermittent fasting it really really forces you to sit with your thoughts because you can't distract yourself as much so that might also mean directly doing things to solve the things that are stressing you, if that makes sense. So I don't know, for example, for myself, maybe I'll be like, oh, I'm just so overwhelmed with everything I have to do. I'm going to eat some chocolate. Whereas if I didn't have the option of snacking, it's I'm so overwhelmed. Or maybe I should write out a to-do list of all the things that I have to do. Um, and that will make it feel less stressful for me. I don't know, it's kind of little things like that. It really depends on your specific circumstances and what's stressing you out. And the other thing is just, I suppose, keeping yourself busy, keeping yourself active and doing things rather than just sitting around thinking about when you can eat next. But anyway, that is my five tips to help beat mindless snacking. As I said before, these are obviously just things that have been working in my experience. This isn't medical advice and this isn't targeted at obviously like eating disorders or anything like that. But with that, um, yeah, so I have been off the snacking bandwagon for a little longer than a week, haven't been eating chocolate. For the first few days, I felt like I was going actually mental thinking about chocolate constantly, but now I am feeling much more sane. I don't really think about it so much. I think about it in a more healthy way. I'm like, oh, that would be nice, but I'm not like, oh my God, I need it if you catch my drift. So that pretty much wraps up this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed already, but otherwise I will see you guys in our next video. Also, Comment below what your tips are for mindless snacking because I think we could all use a little bit of help when it comes to this department. Anyways, I will finally leave. Hope you guys have all been having a great week and I'll chat to you soon. Bye.